Welcome to MCPS Algebra 2 Final Exam Review Packet, Unit 2, Topic 1. Um, I, my suggestion is that you've already tried all of the problems before you watch the video. That will help you the most. So, hopefully you've already tried them. If you haven't, maybe hit pause, try the problem, and then watch it and see if you agree. Alright, so an, an Algebra 2 class is asked to solve the radical equation the square root of 2x plus 5 equals x plus 1. Jack decides to solve this equation symbolically. So solve the equation and determine which solutions, if any, are extraneous. So we need to solve the square root of the quantity 2x plus 5 is equal to x plus 1. Now to undo the square root, we talked about inverses and we said, well, really to undo something, we use the inverse. So the inverse of square rooting is squaring. So we're going to square both sides to undo the square root. That makes everything here drop down, 2x plus 5. And here, if I have something squared, I really want to write it out two times. x plus 1, x plus 1. Great, so let's go ahead and dis use distributive property to multiply this out. Some people use the area model that looks like this. Some people use distributive property. Either way works. Some people call it FOIL, although we're trying to get away from that terminology. But x times x is x squared. x times 1 is 1x. One, 1 times x is x. And 1 times 1 is 1. And here I still have 2x plus 5. All right. So here I have x squared plus 2x plus 1. And I need to take these and subtract and move them over there. So we want to get everything to one side. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. That cancels and that cancels. So we just get 5 equals x squared plus 1. And last step, we're just going to subtract 5 from both sides. 0 equals x squared minus 4. All right, we are getting really close to an answer. Now there's a couple ways of solving this. We could solve it using square root method. So square root method. And that would be add four to both sides. So we have four equals x squared. We would square root both sides, hence the name of the method. And we get x equals a plus or minus two. So that's one way to solve it. Another way to solve it is with a factor method. Keep changing colors here. Huh. Okay. The factor method, I would say, well, that's a difference of two perfect squares. And it factors like this. X times X gave me X squared. And what times what multiplies to give negative four that adds to give zero? Well, plus two and minus two. And then we see that the solutions are x equals a positive 2 and x equals a negative 2. Either way that you'd like to solve it will work fine. Now, we are not ready to say that both of those are solutions because we need to figure out if any are extraneous. So we need to plug them back in. So we're going to do a check. So my ch first check is square root of 2 times a positive 2 plus 5 equals a positive 2 plus 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. 4 plus 5 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3 equals 3. Yep, that one checks out. So we know that x equals 2 is a solution. All right, let's check the other one. So if we plug in the square root of 2 times negative 2, was our other solution that we got. And we're going to plug in a negative 2 plus 1. Get a negative 1 on this side. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1 equals negative 1. That's not true. So that means that we have found an extraneous solution. So this tells us that x equals negative 2 is extraneous. So it says solve the equation to determine which solutions, if any, are extraneous. So x equals 2 is the solution, and x equals negative 2 was extraneous. So it's, so it's not a solution. All right. Now, we're talking about the same problem still. 
It says, your friend Sally decides to try graphically solving it, and she looks at the graph of the square root function, and she looks at the graph of the linear function separately, and she wants to know where the two are equal. So when we look at that, we want to say, well, where are they equal? Where do they cross? Well, they cross right here at positive 2, at x equals 2. That's where they cross, so that is our solution. x equals 2 is the solution. How does Sally determine the solution to equation using the graph, to the equation using the graph? So she finds where they intersect. All right, uh, since she only obtained one solution from the graph, she thinks that there should be an extraneous solution, but does not know what to do to the graph to show the extraneous solution. How helps Sally to, by adding a piece to her graph that would show the extraneous solution? So if we had the positive version of the square root and we also had the negative square root of x plus five, that would graph here, here, um, here, it would look something like that. If we had that portion as well, then we would also have the extraneous at x equals negative 2. All right. Wonderful. Okay. So in the following problems, i is equal to the square root of negative 1, and a plus bi represents a complex number where a and b are real numbers. So we want to know what the value of i plus i squared plus i cubed plus i fourth is. So we want to figure out each of those individually. i is just i. I'm going to leave it as i. All right, i squared is a square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Really, that's the same as the square root of negative 1 squared. And the square and square root undo each other, and we just get negative 1. All right, i cubed, really, i cubed is i times i squared. So if we take those two things and multiply them together, we'll get a negative i for i cubed, right? So to get i cubed, we took i times i squared. i is just i, and i squared is negative 1, so we get a negative i. And then we want to also add to i to the fourth. To get i to the fourth, we're going to take i squared times i squared. i squared is negative 1. Multiply those two together, and you get a positive 1. So when we add all these up, 1 and negative 1, i and negative i, we end up with zero. Huh, that's interesting. Okay. Now we're going to perform some operations on complex numbers. All right. So here we're going to add our real parts. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. It says we want to write our answer in complex form, a plus bi. Um, okay, so we're going to add our real parts. Be really careful. A, a lot of students will see these parentheses and they'll think, oh, I have to multiply, and they'll, they'll miss the fact that there's a plus sign there. Here it says multiply, but here it says add them together. So here I have 3 plus 9, add our real parts. I'm sorry, I went jump to the answer. 3 plus 6, which is 9, add the real parts, and then add up the imaginary parts, i plus a negative 5i plus i plus a negative 5i. So add those up and we get negative 4i. So that is our complex number. When we add these two, we get this. All right, now we need to subtract. And we have to be careful that we subtract both parts. So we're going to say 4 minus 2. And we're going to say 7i minus a negative 6i. 7i minus a negative 6i. And minus a negative becomes plus. Now, because I've already distributed this negative, we're adding all the pieces together. 4 minus 2. That's my negative, and that's my negative. So we're taking this part and adding it to that part. 4 minus 2 is 2. And six pl 7 plus 6 would be 13i. And that would be our complex answer to the subtraction. All right. Now we are going to multiply. So there's a couple methods here. You could use distributive property. I'll use distributive property on one, and I'll use the box uh, area model on the other. So 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 9 is a positive 27i. 
All right, let's use a different color. Now we're taking negative 2i times 4, negative 8i, and negative 2i times 9 is negative 18i squared. All right, we can combine our like terms. So 27 and minus 8 would be 19 plus 19i. This is, this is important. I always tell my students to circle that because we know that i squared is negative 1. So negative 18 times a negative 1 really ends up being a positive 18. Wonderful. So here we have a positive 18, and here we have a positive 12, and we have to add up our two like terms, so 10, 20, 30. So we end up with 30 plus 19i. Wonderful. All right. This guy, we're going to solve with the area model in case that is your preferred method. You could use this for either the multiplication. Now, you know what? Sometimes students get confused and they want to use the area model for addition, and that actually doesn't work. Area model, if you're finding the area of something, it's length times width, and you're doing a product, not a sum. So this works for a product. Okay, so here we have 4 minus 3i. And on this side, we have 4 plus 3i. Now, I immediately see, oh, those are conjugates. There's something special about those. The 4 and 3 are the same, but the plus and minus, that means they're conjugates. So 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 3i is 12i. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12i. And negative times positive is a negative 9i squared. Now, again, I'm going to circle that because I think, oh, i squared, that's important. That is a negative 1. We never want to leave it as i squared. So negative 9 times negative 1 is a positive 9. So I can add up my 16 and 9, and I get 10, 25. And then I add these two up, and oh, they cancel out. So this because they were complex conjugates, the minus 12i and plus 12i cancel out and become zero. So my final answer is a, is a real number, right? We got rid of any of the imaginary parts. Good. This one, uh, we want to be really careful. I would say write it out two times, because oftentimes students make mistakes if they don't. 7 plus 5i, 7 plus 5i, and you can solve it in either the, the ways that we've talked about. Um, so I'm just going to use distributive property because I don't have a lot of space here. 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times 5 is positive 35i. And then we have another positive 35i. Oops. Plus 35i again. And then plus 25i squared. Plus 25i squared. But i squared is a negative 1. So we get a negative 25 here and a positive 49 here, so we can combine those and we get, let's see, take 20 away, and we have 29 minus 5 would be 24. And if I add these two together, I get 30, 60, 70, I. And that would be our answer. Uh, let me zoom out of this page so we can see all of those at once. Let's check and see if the answer key is correct with those ones. Um, sometimes there are errors, so we need to be, sometimes take it with a grain of salt. Hmm. Can't find my answers. Let's see, what problem are we on? 35. Okay, we got 9 minus 4i, good. 2 plus 13i, good. 30 plus 19i, and 25. 24 plus 70, I, we did them great. All right, next page. These are wonderful ones. Okay, so one of the solutions of a quadratic equation is of q of x equals zero, x is x equals negative four. Complete the following. So if I know, what this is saying, if I know that q of zero, q of, I'm sorry, q of x, q of negative four is zero, I know that negative 4 is one of my zeros, so negative 4 is a 0 of q. Um, I also can tell what a factor is. My factor would be x plus 4.
All right, so we know the quantity x plus 4. Uh, that is our factor. Um, the point is located is the location of the x-intercept of the graph. So the point is a negative 4 comma 0. Negative 4 is our x value, and it's 0 on the y. The second solution to the equation is always, sometimes, or never real. So let me think about this. I'm thinking about a quadratic, right? It's a quadratic. So I either have two imaginary, I have one real that repeats itself, right? Multiplicity 2 or I have two real. So if I know that I have one real solution, oh, sorry, it would be negative four, so it would be over here, but if I know I have one real, the other one also has to be real. Even if it's this one, it repeats itself, but it's still real. So if we know there's one real, then the other one is always going to be real. Okay? All right, let's look at this down here. All right, so the solution of the quadratic equation are x equals 3 and x equals 7. So the solutions to when the equation is equal to 0, so we're finding the zeros, and the zeros are at 3 and 7. Complete the following. What are the factors? So if it's positive 3, then we're going to have x minus 3, because that's the relationship that factors have with zeros, and x minus 7 is the other factor. The points are the locations of the x-intercepts on the graph. So the points are positive 3, 0, and positive 7, 0. All right. And what are the zeros? Uh, well, hmm. That's kind of weird. Um, I would say negative, uh, positive 3 and 7, or x equals 3 and x equals 7. They may have been looking for 3 and 7, but I feel like either of those are acceptable. Okay? All right. I th All right, so on the axes below, sketch the graph of a quadratic function with the stated roots. Now there are so many answers you could give here, I couldn't, I couldn't show you all of them. So I'm just giving an example, yours might look something like it. Um, so if there are two real roots, it must cross the x-axis. So I could, I could be opening down, I could be opening up, as long as it crosses the x-axis, then I know there are two real solutions, two real roots. There's another another word for zeros. All right, if we have one double root, it has to bounce off. It has to hit the x-axis and bounce off. And it's symmetric on either side. Sorry, it's a little, it's a little not uh, perfect, but that's okay. Okay, so this, it bounces off. It only has one real solution, but it's repeated twice. So x equals two and x equals two. There's two solutions that are the exact same. And then over here, in order to have two imaginary roots, it cannot touch the x-axis. It could be, I had one of my students come up to the board and draw the closest thing they could, where it doesn't actually touch the x-axis. It would have imaginary roots. It could be something up here. Anything that does not touch the x-axis would, would have two imaginary roots. Alright, so now we have five problems to solve, and that is the end of this video for Unit 2, Topic 1. Okay. So solve the following quadratic equations over the set of complex numbers. Show how you determined your solution. So let's go ahead. We're going to zoom into each one. Okay. So the first one, it looks like the square root method would be a great method to use. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. And the square root of square ends up with x. Now we have to make sure when we take the square root of both sides, we're putting a plus or minus. Here, we can break it down into the square root of negative 1 and the square root of 25. Square root of 1, negative 1 is i, and the square root of 25 is 5. And we tend to put the, f the number, the whole number, first, and the i second. So x equals plus or minus 5i. All right, so that I just want to clarify, that's two solutions. x equals a positive 5i, and x equals a negative 5i, OK? So just, just to be clear, those are two solutions just together. Okay, let's look at this guy. I think the square root method would also be a really good way to solve this one. Because I see this quantity squared, I can get rid of that square and unlock that x very quickly by just taking the square root of both sides. So here, square and square root undo each other, and we get x plus 3 equals, here, square root of negative 1, square root of 16. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of negative 1 is i, but I tend to put the 4 first. And when I take the square root, I have to make sure, don't forget to put the plus or minus. So 
plus or minus 4i on that side and x plus 3. One last step and we have x equals subtract 3, negative 3, plus or minus 4i. All right, great. So that would be our problem B. <laughs> All right, uh, problem C. Let's see. Okay. So you would want to get everything on one side, and we have a couple options x squared minus 6x plus 15 equals 0. All right, so I was just discussing with a colleague here. <laughs> Can I factor this? Let's see, 1 times 5 is, one, 1 times 15 is 15. I can't get 6 from that. And 3 times 5 is 15, but I can't get 6 from that either. So it looks like I need to use quadratic formula. So I'm going to write the formula x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, now I need to identify my a is 1, the coefficient here of the x squared term, b is negative 6, the coefficient of the x term, and c is a positive 15. All right, so let's plug these in. x equals the opposite of b, 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared, I'm just going to write that whole thing. Negative 6 times negative 6 is a positive 36. So b squared minus 4 times a, uh oh, sorry. All right, so that was 4 times 1 times 15 all over 2 times a. Okay, so 36, 4 times 15. 15 times 2 is 30, and 30 and 30 is 60. So 36 minus 60. 6 plus or minus the square root of 60. Oh, goodness, sorry. Let, let's try that again. Okay. Okay, this says the square root of 36 minus 60. That's much better. Over 2. Okay, so when we simplify 36 minus 60... Let's see, there's 4 difference, and that gets to 40, so 24, so negative 24. So we have 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 24 over 2. But I don't ever want to leave a negative inside there. So really what that's going to equal is 6 plus or minus i root 24 over 2. So that would be my final answer. x equals, let's put the x equals on this side, and that would be my solution for part c. Alright, I'm going to see if we can factor this. So we use a method, we call it the Choi method because we have a teacher here, Mr. Choi. It's really a guess and check method for this. So here we say, well, what, fact what are the factors of 5? Well, 1 and 5 are the only ways you could get 5. And 1 and 3 are the only ways you could get 3. And then we, we multiply crisscross because that gives me my inners and outers. So it's my distributive property. So 5 times 1 is 5, and 1 times 3 is 3. Can I get a 2 from 5 and 3? Well, only if one of them is negative, and I don't see that happening. So it looks like maybe it's not factorable. So again, we're going to use quadratic formula. Okay. Uh, let's, okay, so A is 5, B is 2, and C is 3. So let's plug them in. X equals the opposite of B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C. All right, all over 2 times A. All right, 5 times, 20 times 3 is 60 again, so we have... 4 minus 60. All right, and then negative 2 plus or minus over 10. Okay, so x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 56 over 10. And we can't leave it like that. Negative 2 plus or minus i root 56 because we can take out that negative 1 over 10. Um, there are a couple ways of writing this. Um, you could break it apart and say negative 2 over 10 plus or minus i root 56 over 10 and then simplify this to negative 1 fifth 
plus or minus i root 56 over 10. But I feel like this is probably not what the county said. I feel like this is probably what the answer key said. But either of these are acceptable answers. Wonderful. All right. Looks like there's just one left. Um, and we'll do that in just a second. All right. The last problem. We want to be really careful. Square that very carefully. X plus 1 times x plus 1. And we get x squared plus 1x plus 1x plus 1. And that's x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then on this side, let's see, we have 2x squared, 2x squared plus x plus 20. And we're going to move everything over. So I'm going to subtract x squared. I'm going to move everything to this side. Minus x squared minus x squared. So I get x squared minus 2x minus 2x. And I get minus x. Here, minus 1, minus 1, I get plus 19. Hmm. All right, it looks like, again, we are going to need to use quadratic formula. All right, um, I don't know that I really want to walk through that whole process again. Let's just see what the final answer is. It says for E, the final answer is x equals 1 plus or minus i root 75 over 2. All right. Wonderful. I hope that this was helpful. Oh, I notice right here, um, we could simplify this a little further. 6 divided by 2, we could make it a 3, plus or minus i, and root 24 simplifies, but we haven't really showed you how to do that. So this is also an acceptable answer. Um, all right. Wonderful. Thank you for watching the unit to what unit are we on <laughs> unit uh unit two topic one video wonderful